Hello guys, welcome along, Nigel here with you, part 29 already of this um, big bad buff build for beginners and I can't believe I've just had a look and it's nearly two weeks since I was 12 days since I did a last, the last did a video on this so uh, sorry about that. In the meantime I have been actually uh, sanding, more sprue goo, sanding, letting it all go down and it's had a couple of days ago it's had a, a layer of Mr. Surfacer on it so um, basically that will all be gone off now and we should be past the sinking stage although what I'm probably going to do is after this I'll probably find some low spots put some more in there and then we'll um and then we'll get it you know let that go off and then go again the thing is we, we need to be really careful as, as I've said so many times no matter what you're building whether it be a ship hull or a um you know a, a, a space rocket with all your seams on the on the um on the main tubes you know whatever it is if you've got large areas like seams then a centrally fuselage don't be tempted to just bang it together, fill it and get going because it will sink back. OK, especially if you use these solvent type fillers, you can use your water based type fillers like your V8 hose and everything and plastic putty. But I don't recommend them. I don't like them. Personal preference. I just think they're like tile grout. They don't actually bond to the plastic. They just sit on top. If you, you know, if you do an experiment, get some, put it on some plastic, it just breaks away. It's, it doesn't actually adhere like Mr. Surfacer and that does. So um, what I'm going to do, I wouldn't normally recommend this, but I'm going to use a magic marker, a pen, um, and go over this area here. And just basically go over this area here with a pen, and then we'll see if we've got any low spots. The reason I say I wouldn't recommend this, I've said it so many times, the problem with these is when you paint over them, when you paint any you know solvent paints or whatever over them they tend to come through and they just keep coming through now in this particular instance I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to be sanding it all away anyway and anything that is left is going to get covered with Mr. Servicer so I would normally use pencil but so you can see better what I'm doing the other thing I'm doing is I've got my zebra sticks here these are the old worn out ones there's a 400 600 150 and that's a 220 I'll start with the 220 the reason I'm using old ones is I love Mr. Servicer, it's great for everything, but it does have a downside, and that is it will clog your sanders up quite readily. So if you're able to use it wet, you can use it wet, and that'll save it getting clogged up, but generally it will clog your sanders up. There's something else I want to do is get some pen over that area there, because I've got a feeling it's a bit high. So I'm not going to do it on this undercarriage, I'm going to hold it in my hands, because I don't want to be loading up the undercarriage. So I'm just going to gently... With the uh, 220 grit stick, you notice I'm using something wide. If I go in there with something like a, a skinny stick, then a great, I can sand away in the middle, but I'll probably end up like a ploughed field. I want something wide to get a nice flat area. So you can see I'm sanding down here now, and we can see that the pen is all disappearing at the root here. It's not disappearing from here. It's disappearing in the middle there. So we can see we've got a raised area in the middle. In fact, I can feel it now that I can see it. So we're just going to keep sanding. I seem to remember this wing kind of came along and had a step up at the end. So we may have to put some Mr. Surface right as far as here. We shall see. But I want to avoid as much filler and Mr. Surface as I can because, as you all know, I want to glue those um, stretch sprue raised panel lines on there. And obviously gluing to Mr. Surface is not as easy as gluing to styrene. So there we go so just sanding that there and you can see we've got a low spot in the middle here well, it's not actually in the middle the seam is here look if I use the um, if I use this pencil you can see here that's the seam there you can see just see the seam in there so it's actually in the wing section that it's low we can keep sanding and level everything out the trouble is we end up making all this too low now if you remember as well I I think this wing root is a little bit too high it's more towards you than this one is because it goes further up the fuselage so what I want to do here is just sand this away and get it all level and flat if you remember we had a step I mean I've done a lot of work on this off camera because basically you can't I can talk about it to the blue in the face you can't really learn a lot from just watching me sand you can learn a lot from this because it's showing low spots and high spots so you can see on the leading edge there we've got a little low spot in there well that's nothing so I can sand that away okay notice I'm still using a 220 grit I'm not using fine sticks or anything I'm using my coarse sticks and 
not worrying about panel lines. We've got a panel line there. I'm sanding away. Look, I'll sand the rest of it away. There we go. Still sanding away. I'm just going to put some more pen on here so we can see exactly what's going on. I'm not using any pressure, I'm letting the sand and stick do the work so that I can actually see what's going on here. You can see it's raised in here in the extreme root. He says you won't learn a lot from just watching me sand and then the next three hours of the video is just watching me sand. <laughs> the wouldn't put you through that. So I'm going to go down to a 400, although it's worn out, and that'll just remove any sanding marks that we've got in the plastic. And the only reason I'm doing it now is in case I forget, put the primer on. If you've been over this, you end up with deep gouges in it from the coarse sanding stick. Okay, and then round that leading edge, I've got a, I think this is a 600, this is an 800 sponge. I'll just go around that leading edge and get a nice radius in there. Okay, so that leading edge is done. The only area we need to concentrate now is here. You can see we've got pen left, and I can feel that we've got quite a big dip here. Okay, you can see where it's been sanded away. If I just go over it again... This is what the beauty of using pens and stuff is, and pencils. You can see that we've got the area, the area here hasn't got any pen on it, which means it's high. And this area here has all got pen it, so it's low. So it's either high here or low there, or both. So if you just sound gently with your stick flat, once you start to see the pen disappearing everywhere else around it, you know you've got a low spot. If you end up with pen everywhere and you've just got this high spot here that keeps getting sanded it means that's high okay so if I just show you this remembering this is a beginner's video if I just go over with this pen like this okay so you can see we've got pen everywhere now if I sanded that okay and all that I had cleaned up was that area there and there was nothing else removed then I would know that's a high spot and I would just keep sanding until it's gone but because my pen is disappearing from everywhere else. I know that I'm okay to keep going. And I know that I've got a low spot there. Okay, so that's that done. A little bit of work to do down in that route there. So hopefully we can get this done in this video and then um, and then basically we can start on painting our walkways again. Now if you're building this with me and you want to make sure you're prepared, I've ordered a load of 1.5mm uh, Izu tape from Premium Hobbies. Now, if you're not in the UK you can get Izu tape pretty much anywhere, A-I-Z-U. Basically, you just want some 1.5 millimeter masking tape, something good quality. Some of the cheaper ones tend to be a bit, a bit sort of fluffy edged, shall we say? I won't say they're crap, but they're just a bit fluffy edged. And that side's much better. You can see again, we've got a low spot here, same as this side. So obviously, the wing is sunk in that area. So I'm just going to go over here with a sponge. If you notice, I'm avoiding sponges in this area here. Reason being, obviously, when you use a sponge, okay, when you use a hard stick, it's up against the surface. It's hard. It's not going to sort of deform into it. When you use a sponge, it deforms into the shape. So if I used a sponge in this area here, the sponge would happily ride up over this high patch and go into that low patch. So you'd look at it and you think, oh, that's all sanded, lovely. But it's not going to look right once it's um, done. Never use sponges where you're after something flat. I only use sponges over contoured areas or for final finishing. 
Okay, so that's that's my tip for today. Right, go over that with some 400. Got eight arms, I was getting quite a beast this thing. So there we go, so that's that done. So we'll get some Mr. Service in there. We'll just have a look at the underside. And that's all looking good. Now, I am going to use a skinny stick on the underside. This is a blue one. Um, and I'm going to use this purely because I don't want to remove all the detail. Because every time I remove detail, I've got to go in and replace it all. And in this underside wing route, I'm not going to really worry about it too much. So there we go. I can get in there and sand that off camera actually easier because I can get it you know where I want it rather than trying to hold it in the camera for you so um there we go so what we've got to do now is put some more Mr. Surfacer in this low area here now just before I do that just in case I'm going to remove my pen or most of it okay so we take a brush, a Mr. Surfacer brush. You can see that's got Mr. Surfacer on it, dried. Take my Mr. Surfacer 1000. I need to order some more from Ed. Don't forget if you're buying stuff from Ed at Premium Hobbies, use the code NMB10 and you get a 10% discount. Right. So I'm just going to brush this in here. And we're going to put plenty on and we're going to go way outside of our our intended area because we can it will give us plenty to feather in if you just paint the area like if I just went in here precisely and did this area here and that's it you probably find that you'll end up with low spots around it then so just going in here Like so. I'm just going to put some more over there just in case because I have got some witness of pen there. You see, I've got some witness of pen there as well. So I'm just going to, just in case. And there we go. We'll let that dry. In fact, I may as well just go over the whole bloody thing again. We'll let that dry and then we'll sand it out again. And we're back. So this is like, I don't know, 72 hours after? <laughs> I don't know. This is taking a long time because basically I'm waiting for video to dry and I'm getting sinkage and stuff I'm also getting questions you know where is part 29 are you working on this thing is it shelved blah 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 um, no I am just literally I there is so much glue and stuff in here I'm waiting for it to shrink so I'm probably repeating myself because this video is being made over many days it's difficult to remember exactly what you said um, I don't like going back and watching myself. So unusual, I'm using pen. I would normally use pencil. I wouldn't recommend using pen because it comes back through the paint, as I've explained a million times before. So I've got a little 400 grit Matador stick here. I've got my arsenal of, these are all my Infini Sanders here in the lovely Premium Hobbies holder. Shameless plug there. And so basically I'm just going to rub over here now. In fact, that is a little bit too fine. I'm going to go with a 220 and just without putting any pressure on, just gently go over and see what we've got. Now, what we're looking for is basically having the whole thing sanded down nice and level and flat across here. No sinkage, no lines where the, where the join is, no undulations. Or bad moulding or whatever or bad filler work and yes I'm sanding away detail on the wing but unfortunately that's unavoidable you know I mean the thing is I'm going to replace this with stretched brew and if you are really really worried about this think about it this way guys 
you know, you're going to replace this here with a piece of stretch sprue. Really, what is the difference in replacing 25mm or 35mm? There is no difference. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. It's the same when I see people do welding on cars. They'll, they'll have an area of rust and they'll neatly cut around that rust and cut a plate that fits in perfectly and then find halfway through welding that they've, they've got a bit of a thin, rust, a thin rusty metal, you know, where they've cut it. You know, if you've got a rust patch here, cut a piece out, weld a piece in. <laughs> don't, don't try and sort of stay away from it. I don't know why people... It, it's, it's, I think it's human nature. I've done the same. You, you, you want to keep as much originality as you can but in cases like this, you know, like I say, it's going to be a case of, I mean, here I've, I've sanded that one off, which I needn't have done. But, you know, if it was just this line here, it would be a case of replacing that much of it or that much of it. So it doesn't really make any difference. So here we go. Just, I'm not putting any pressure on. If I did, I'd break the undercarriage. And as you can see here, we've got this, this wing root area here. As I said, it's high. So that area there is sanded out. We've got nothing on there now. It's all, all the work is down in here. And we can see we've got Mr. Surfacer. We've got the um, sprue goo coming through. But we've got a nice flat area, which is good. So that's pretty cool. So just get in here and sand all this area out nice and flat. So it looks like we're there and I'm happy that it's had so long to dry that it we probably were over the shrinkage area over the shrinkage time and this has probably been I'm gonna say two three weeks it's probably more like a month there we go we can see there that what I've done is sanded that and all that pen has disappeared. So what I can do is just go over it again, just to make sure the pen has picked up dust. Okay, so I can just go over that gently now. That will go over the 400 and we should see no pen left at all. And there we are. Looking good, guys. I think you agree. Nice and smooth. So now I'll do the same on this side. Now on this side, I'm going to be a little bit more careful because we have got a load of panel detail. I'll sod it. I'd rather have this nice and flat than, than have to make an extra panel line or two rather than risk having this noticeable because it's such a noticeable part of the model. And I think, you know, if this was on a, on a stand at a show, I think this is where the eye would go, is to this area. And what I would love is if, you know, if, if this ever does get seen by anybody, I'd love, you know, so was, how did you get those raised panel lines across? How did you deal with those seams and that those panel lines look fine? And then you get the, why didn't you scribe it? Because those panel lines are inaccurate. Yeah. So scribing, mate. <laughs> so. There we go, that didn't take too long, did it? That one's done as well. If you see a large area of Mr. Servicer like this here, it's often a good idea just to gently go over it in case you have got high spots there. And you really want to be able to see the seam coming through so that you know you're sort of not just sanding down a huge mound over, over the seam. If you can hear anything in the background, Jess is, uh, little Jess has just had a bath, so she's running around like a nutter. And there we go. So that is now ready for us to do some stretch sprue work on. So I'll get on with that. You don't need to see that again. And then um, 
then I'll come back. Okay, so just in case you haven't seen the way I do this, um, replacing the raised detail, you can see here, I've done some here, here, here and here. So um, basically this is how I do it. And what I've got, I've got some stretch sprue. I'm not going to show stretch sprue again. That's just a, I've done that a million times. Um, basically it's very, very fine. Very, very fine indeed. Um, get it really hot, uh, so it you know really does go just full sag itself, and then um, and then go from there. But you you want it really, really fine. And all you can do is just lay it against some panel lines that are already on the model like this, and just you know look at it and say, oh, does it does it match yet? Yeah, okay, it looks okay to me. Right. So what we're going to do first thing I do is move the camera. I think. Right. So. I'm going to do this line here, which is, which is just a panel line, uh, um, walkway line. It's not exactly actually a panel line. So um, first thing I need to do is check if it's actually straight. All right. So I can see from my Ravel instructions here that we have actually got these these wing lines are straight here, and then we're going to do another one around the wing root. If that's correct, I'll check that out. So basically, what we do is we come along with our thinly stretched sprue. We take a piece of masking tape. We're going to get some fresh masking tape. Notice I'm using the cheap stuff. No point in using your nice Tamiya masking tapes, which costs a lot more, like, you know, 10 times more than these. So just with a piece of cheap masking tape, I'm just going to put it over the end there. OK, and then basically just come back a good sort of couple of inches so that I can see what I'm doing. And the reason for that is, is so that if I put it right here, I put the tape here where my finger is, I could end up getting the sprue like that. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it back so I can actually follow the original panel line. Okay. And then just hold it on this end with another piece of tape. So I can get that lined up on that panel line there, get that lined up there and just pull it down like so okay now we're just going to check that check that I'm good on there yeah okay good with that so and this is only um this is only really a marker for a decal I'm doing my panel lines in paint so I'm just going to put a drop of Tammy extra thin on there and you can see what's happened I've put too much on and it's actually broken but it's broken where I want to cut it anyway, so that's okay. So happened there. I showed what I showed you. I wanted to happen happened, and then I'm just going to put a drop here in the middle. Okay, this brush is too dry. Put a drop in a different place. There we go, and that'll hold it. I'll just tack that in place. And then I'm just going to. Just give that a nudge like that, job done. And then this actually finishes at the wing root, so I can just cut it off there. And then take away the tape. And we're done. Now that one I didn't need to cut because it already broke itself. And then now that's tacked down, we can come along with the glue and just run a tiny extra thin over it. Don't play with it, leave it, just let it do its thing. And that'll be it. That's that done. Okay, so it's that simple. Um, I'll go on now and get the rest done, then I'll come back. There we go then, guys. That's that all done. I've got my panel lines. I haven't done all these lines around the um, where these walkways are because it's going to be painted anyway, and it doesn't really show. So another thing is they need to be perfectly straight. So if I if I get it slightly out, it'll look odd. So this one here I should probably remove anyway. Um, so basically, there we go. I'm going to call it a day for this video because I'm getting nagged about you know where I'm. Uh, whether I'm where the videos are and what I'm doing and everything but um, basically we can crack on with this now because this has been the big hold up as you can see you've got all that sprue going there and everything and I've, I've wanted it to all dry back nice and solid so this has been the hold up so I'm going to get some black primer on this now and we'll see what it looks like and then I think we'll call it a day right so I've got some uh, some of my this is this primer here this is the MIG one shot which is the same as Badger Stone or Res so we can just come along and just get some on here, just a light coat, just to see what it looks like, see how it's going to look when it dries, or when it's painted, should I say. 
and I'm having fun with this again. This is one of the problems with this Badger Steiner Res. Make one shot, UMP. If you don't mix them 100% properly from the get-go, you will get issues. So, I don't know what on earth is going on there, but we've got like lines in the paint. It's almost like there's hair in there. <laughs> I think it's probably static and there's bits of fluff on the model. I don't get it though because I only just rubbed it down. So, But anyway, it's, it's just a guide cut anyway just to see how we're looking. Just going with that bit of stretch through as well. See how that looks. And I'm happy with that. Um, give the airbrush a clean in a minute. Basically, I'm happy with that. Um, we can see, I'm not sure what all this is here, it's like a very light layer of dust on it or something. Um, but if we look at the seam, it's not really there, it's not really visible. So I'm happy with that. Um, I'm going to leave that now to dry a little bit before I sand it back and then we'll see how it looks. But um, yeah, this has been the the biggest major part of this model, as everybody knows. It's such a load-bearing area. Um, God only knows how you manage with a model collect one because the wing location isn't so good. So um, we'll call that a day. That's been part 29. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. To those of you that have emailed me and God knows what about getting this out, then here it is. <laughs> okay, so I'll, um, I'll see you all soon for part 30. And um, we'll start to get these walkways done and get some camouflage done.